what we want to engage in uh, this, this afternoon is, uh, you know, the general question, how do we engage digital natives in learning and work in the 21st century? It's kind of the general uh, topic or the, uh, the question. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, the IVK initiative, which uh, is very specific. This is a general question of how we engage digital natives or the new, uh, the new emerging generation into learning and work. That's the general question. We're going to concentrate on looking at a particular example, uh, which we call the IVK initiative. And the IVK initiative was uh, specifically designed uh, to uh, address what we viewed as uh, the, I, the, the IT management course uh, at the university level, and uh, at really three dimensions. Uh, so uh, the graduates, uh, students, MBAs, undergraduates, and exec ed. So first of all, the problem. And the problem has plagued us uh, for really, literally almost all my career uh, in teaching uh, IT management, uh, primarily at the Harvard Business School, which was uh, where I literally was the main part of my career, now here, but also even in the, uh, in the consulting environment. So what we have seen is we've seen the IT education being embraced by uh, you know, business schools literally right at the outset. And what we've seen is, is that as Moore's Law has continued, it has moved from teaching programming or a very technical orientation to the point where IT uh, became a major function in organizations requiring uh, management here and a management discipline very similar to marketing, accounting, or any other discipline and continues to have changed dramatically as we move from uh, what we call the DP era, which were literally where, where you know, the company fully controlled their computers, all the way through uh, the network where now uh, you know, the network environment and the World Wide Web is the, uh, you know, is the focus point. So what has been the problem? The problem that we have uh, been plagued with is that we haven't really been able to engage effectively uh, MBAs, undergraduates, or executives in IT management learning. So it's kind of like, um, you know, the, the general attitude is, is that uh, IT in the MBA programs, IT is like international business. It's everywhere and nowhere. We all, we, we all agree that it's important, but uh, so there ought to be something there, but we really don't know what is there. It's been the overall uh, effects. So what we have is uh, if you make the course elective, you have low enrollments, uh, low student ratings, because uh, you know it's a mixed mash of technology. In this particular uh, undergraduate program, we still teach Excel, uh, database, and uh, you know, stuff like that. And, the stu and then we also teach security. We teach uh, you know, outsourcing. And the students are absolutely confused. And they tell us they are confused and disappointed. Uh, and there's a general lack of engagement with the students. Uh, and uh, the other thing that we've been played with, students really think they know, because they can use a computer, they think they know it. And in fact, the students, as we have discussed, probably are better than the faculty in utilizing computers. But they make the giant leap of imagination that because they're pretty good at using it, they know it and quit listening. So that's, that's part of the problem. Now, you know, uh, something that actually has made the problem even worse is the notion that we got this, unlike any other functional area, we got Moore's Law dri driving this thing. You know, it's like a floating crap game. The rules are changing all the time. So I have captured the overall problem. 
and um, we've all been living it. And uh, what I want to do is turn it over to, uh, to Rob and then, uh, and then Shannon to describe what we've been working on uh, in the last two years to try to address the problem. Rob? Thanks. Thanks, Dick. So the Harvard Business School, coming from there, we're extremely uh, enthusiastic about the case method. Uh, but the case method, uh, you know, it has a lot of benefits. The students find it engaging. They, are, they sit on the front of their chairs. They interact with you. They disagree with each other. They debate. Uh, but over time, over a series of sessions, it's somewhat difficult to build sort of cumulative frameworks. There's sort of an 80 minute session. You open it. You achieve closure during the session. And you can do it somewhat through course design. You can build cumulative frameworks over time. But it's certainly not the same caliber of framework that you would get with a more deductive approach, where you're going to the people who have thought about this the most thoroughly, uh, and you're laying it out as a completely fully developed theory. So, so there are some problems with cumulative frameworks. On the other hand, if we go with what I'll call the textbook approach, but you could also call it the theory-based approach or, uh, or something like that, where it's a more deductive approach, where you begin with the theory and then try to get the students to apply it. Uh, whereas the other approach begins with the cases and tries to get students to derive the theory. Uh, so, so we've got these kind of two approaches, both with good points and both with shortcomings. Uh, and it sort of made us think, uh, you know, in terms of parameters of a solution, can we cover the essentials of IT management as a business subject, preserving the best elements of the case method in active learning, while extending the forum to allow better development of cumulative frameworks, in other words, to solve this problem with the difficulty of wiring together a framework over uh, a number of cases, avoiding death spirals, uh, and engaging a generation of digital natives for whom technology is an essential part of the world, who have grown up in settings in which people have competed for their attention with narrative and interactive media content, and, by the way, an interesting problem too, who have different degrees of technical preparation. So uh, certainly in the MBA class, this is a big, big deal, that they walk into the door, some of them knowing a great deal about technology, others not knowing very much at all. So uh, I mean, that brings me uh, to Shannon's uh, piece of the puzzle that she brought with her that I think got us unstuck. Uh, and at this point, I'm just going to turn it over to Shannon, and she can talk you through that. Great, thank you. Uh, I think what we haven't quite said yet, uh, but you probably know from looking at the packets that you've gotten, is what we ended up with was a series of 18 cases. So that means we need to sustain a story uh, instead of in one 10 to 15 page case over a series of 18 cases. And uh, I had had, uh, I've, I've been starting to do some, a lot of case writing, working with Rob and Dick, uh, but my background uh, was in script development for theater. And right before I started working with Robin Dick, I directed a production of Jason and the Golden Fleece and became very familiar with using the monomyth or the hero's journey, which uh, Joseph Campbell described in his book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces. So some of you are likely familiar with it. Um, whether you know that you are or not, all of you are familiar with it. Uh, it's a dramatic structure found in many narratives uh, all around the world, in different variations always. A um, wide variety of writers have used it, and the great examples are Star Wars, Titanic, The Matrix. You can pick your favorite and maybe keep that in mind. So Joseph Campbell says, The hero ventures forth from the world of common day into a region of supernatural wonder. Fabulous forces are there encountered, and a decisive victory is won. The hero comes back from this mysterious adventure with the power to bestow boons on his fellow man. So it sounds like IT management, right? <laughs> Um, he outlines uh, 17 stages of the hero's journey, and these are, this is just a rough example. Uh, the hero in his ordinary world is called to action. He refuses the call. He accepts the call. A supernatural being comes to his aid with a special gift. The hero faces off with the first threshold guardian, enters this new world, uh, is challenged along the road of trials, faces off with authority, experiences breakthrough, gains a larger point of view, sacrifices himself for the good of others, uh, returns to the ordinary world and is now a master of two worlds. Again, sounds like IT management, right? <laughs> uh, we applied this to our story and I thought, well, what happens if we think of our Jim Barton CIO as the hero who ventures forth from the world of common day business management into a region of supernatural wonder, the IT department? Fabulous forces are there encountered, the IT budget, uh, the digital natives, 
and Web 2.0, so forth. And a decisive victory is won, perhaps. Uh, the hero comes back from this mysterious adventure with the power to bestow boons on his fellow man, IT leadership knowledge. Um, this Using this structure gave uh, us an opportunity to look at, uh, a lot of it was already present in the early work that Robin Dick had been doing. And I thought, well, what if we map this story and what's emerging to the structure, just so that it will give us uh, ways to ask questions, well, what if this happens? What if this happens next? To plot the overall story in a way that would engage the readers. Um, the the char character development, um, this was a useful structure for that. Um, this just gives you a sense of uh, how we could think of Jim Barton as a real person. Audiences should identify with him, walk in his shoes. Uh, he's growing and gaining new knowledge. Um, experiences a separation from his known world and has this lone adventure in the wilderness of IT and then is reintegrated. A useful point, I think, is that the character flaw is a wonderful thing. <laughs> it's the starting point for growth. And for Jim, uh, has, I think, several flaws. You can debate. Uh, but he begins with the flaw of uh, mocking and criticizing his predecessor and then ends up in his shoes. So that's a great starting point for growth. We have at least three mentors, uh, often the wise old person, but in this case, it's actually the kid, the digital native. <laughs> and their role is to teach, protect, give gifts, or plant information which will be important later. And if you're developing a series of 18 cases, it's really uh, useful to leave some dangling threads, some things that you can revisit and uh, use again and again as you um, continue through the series. Know what you don't know is one of those key gifts that's uh, given to Barton by the kid early on and keeps coming up again and again as he makes his way on his journey. So I can go on and on about this, but it's a wonderful, it became a wonderful way to uh, map what was already emerging in the storytelling because I think these are all common elements to how we we're used to practicing and telling stories to one another. But it opens up opportunities to uh, build the plot. Uh, for example, the CEO, if I recall correctly, wasn't, um, wasn't necessarily an unlikable guy. <laughs> uh, at some point, he took a turn and became a little darker, a little bit of a shapeshifter, which is another one of the archetypes. Not quite sure where you stand with him. Um, and set up, became a kind of Darth Vader to Luke Sky Skywalker, if you will. Um, and then set up the need for, at some point in the series, we want to see an atonement with the father, <laughs> is one way of putting it. Uh, there's, these two are going to come into a conflict, and then we want to see how that resolves and where the hero uh, goes with that relationship. So the goal with all of this was to create a compelling story with these cases uh, so that the students would become invested in the characters, in their circumstances, in their choices. And in the case structure, when, they, when often uh, the story gets completed, it isn't all written out for you. Uh, it gets completed in the discussion that happens in the classroom. They're able to express their opinions about what the hero, what the other character should do next, because they're invested in the story in a way that's very familiar to them. It's in a way that they've experienced stories before. Uh, and then they get to complete the journey. So, uh, yeah, so literally in class, uh, they start hating Williams, for example. And uh, I, I mean, uh, it's, it's very interesting to see how they, uh, their relationship with the various characters evolves. So we, we uh, come up with this, uh, what you might call a novel length case series. It's 18 cases. We, want to, we uh, retain the active learning approach, uh, going with the sort of I premiere, uh, semi-fictionalized approach. Uh, these are longitudinal, so they facilitate cumulative framework development. We can start talking about something, return to it three chapters later or whatever, uh, and over time, over the life of the story, develop a, a, a cumulative framework. Uh, students get to know the characters, they get invested in it, they walk in the shoes. Uh, it's officially fictitious, right, uh, in that same way that I premiere is. Almost everything in the, in the story is something that we've encountered in a real setting. Uh, and it covers the essence of what we thought were the main business topics that need, need to be covered in this kind of a course. We, uh, of course, that was a judgment call. There are things that we have undoubtedly left out if you looked at our list of topics um, or included needlessly. Uh, and uh, we also, it's important to note, uh, made use uh, at times of going off to existing cases. 
uh, cases that dug deeper into some of these issues. So there's, for example, if we're dealing with the issue of priorities, there's a Volkswagen of America case that digs really deeply and hard into that issue. So a community-based website development, uh, teaching notes, mini lectures were all part of what we developed alongside it. Uh, there is also now at this point an HBS Press book uh, that will uh, come into being sometime in 2009. Uh, the open source elements are written into the contract with HBS Press. We, they have agreed not to interfere with our efforts to get other people to uh, contribute to the online community. They may actually publish other people's IVK cases uh, if, the, if the authors are uh, agreeable and so on. We have test taught it, as Dick said, to University of Washington undergraduates uh, in an exec program at a large multinational company. Uh, at the Copenhagen Business School to uh, students that are masters in business and computer science. And we'll talk in the plenary session, very different experiences. Uh, I interesting in every case, and we we're planning to use it rather intensively in this July when we teach um, for the 39th time uh, at Harvard Business School, the uh, Delivering Information Services program. So I, I was a bit skeptical at first about the narrative format of Joe Campbell men and heroes in Star Wars. But I must say I was turned around because this was very energizing and a great learning experience. And I would like to do this in the future in my core IS class at the University of Michigan. Question. In the beginning, Rob talked about frameworks and how 18 some odd cases yeah. give us a better opportunity to leverage inductive learning to yield these, these resulting frameworks. Maybe you could give us a glimpse of a framework or some frameworks that... A uh, couple, couple things here. Yeah. Now, do you have, uh, on, the, on our website, we, on the old, you know, we, uh, other important part of this was open source. We wanted to kind of draw people in, yourselves in, where you have experiences. Again, all of us are smarter than some of us. To be able to, in new events, new situations, kind of capture them, you know, util utilizing this structure. The other thing that we did uh, in the open source, uh, which is available, um, is we got the, you know, the cases on there, we got the teaching notes on there, and now we have some of the outlines on it. And Shannon has the outline, I think, that I used, right? Do you have that one up? The course outline? The course outline. And what you'll see is, I mean, I've used a lot of Harvard cases. Uh, in the final, we also used uh, some, a number of articles. We used uh, the HBS article. Uh, that uh, Carr did. I mean, you know, Nick Carr did a classic piece that is in, you know, in there that needs to be discussed. And we use that uh, as a, you know, in, in the cases as one of the things when, when uh, right after this, supposedly when Carl, when Carl Williams loses confidence in Barton, you know, which is a manager now bail in, right, to help him out. I mean, this guy needs some help. I better, you know, pay attention to him. He sends him Carr's article. And then the question is, and, and then he has certain, you know, uh, conclusion he draws. And let's have a discussion about that, you know. So we're able, what we've done is we've kind of looked at the body of knowledge of, of the, um, you know, what we think is now IT management here. We're not dealing uh, much with the technology outside of the fact of the issues with the technology like security. Um, and then what we've done is we've laced in this, this other, uh, what we think is the current body of knowledge that has some kind of, of uh, staying power that people, you know, incur. Yeah, so the syllabus would not include just the IVK cases. Yeah. It would also include readings that, that go along. So, for example, IVK 5 is about value. Mm -hmm. And so some of the articles that I assigned were... Um, uh, it was an Eric Brynjolfsson article on yes. IT value. Oh, the yeah. Ka Nicholas Carr article got assigned for that session. Um, uh, there's a McAfee and Brynjolfsson thing from the Wall Street Journal called Dog Eat Dog that they, they, uh, that yeah, they read. The and um, and you know, the McFarland uh, strategic grid stuff that's... Um, that, uh, and, and we come back to that later. Let, let me just make a few comments yeah. on, oh, on this in yeah. respect. This is the outline that I used. Now, the other thing is, is this the first time through? So we're learning. This was, I've never, I hadn't taught undergraduates for 30 years. And so uh, this is my you know, first experience with them. I was worried about how much business do they actually know? Uh, how much can I pack in? And, and we did some revisions and unpacking of this particular outline. Here, 
in this uh, university, the cases are not you know, used a lot. So spent some time to set up what a case is in a pure way so that you know what it is that we're trying to do, the inference way. Then as you see here, we start right into IVK. I paired them up. IVK and then E. Chopel. Is anybody familiar with that case? Uh, Sabota taught that one. You taught it. This is a uh, case where they use fairly basic technology in farming communities uh, in, uh, in India. So we pair these two cases, we pair these two cases up with, um, you know, as we went through it. And then if you just go through this, what we learned is, is that, you know, that was too much for the undergraduates. So what we did is we started pairing them back. You can see the IBM case, which is a classic one a technology article, um, you know, and I said, even though it's two hours, uh, and even though the style of the case was very readable, shorter, uh, uh, but the issues that are there are really profound type of issues. So what we did is we just went back to spending a lot more time with kind of mini lectures, like, you know, what does a board do? Um, it, when we found that they, uh, for example, that, that the students didn't understand something. So you had a little mini lecture that you would give about that, and then you would go on for the overall issues. So it was kind of, you know, the lecture method, if you will, which was based upon demand, demand that you ended up uh, uh, experiencing in the class, rather than saying, okay, this is, this is a theory. We're going to talk about, you know, organizational structures of companies here. So what happens if they pick some cases like, uh, I don't think like uh, three or five. How does it impact the growth? Right? We actually have a specific uh, recommendations for that because we've designed the series for the maximum adaptability, exactly what you're describing. So we've made specific recommendations to help with that. Um, and on this page, I'll sh I can give everyone access to this website. Uh, but this is the page tailoring the course outline to fit your needs. And we've made some suggestions. So it may be that you just want to uh, focus on the cost of IT and the value of IT. So what do you need to read to be prepared to have that conversation? Uh, we've <coughs> suggested uh, an 18, if you want to do a full 18 session, if you want, which cases might pair well together, um, how to shorten it because um, both Rob and Dick had different constraints and how many class sessions they had, how much time they had, how many cases needed to be covered within each. Um, so we've made some recommendations for that. Now, we, we had this earlier discussion about deep, uh, you know, uh, deep thinking. And uh, what uh, we tried to do with this is do what we think managers have to do in the 21st century is that uh, they're continually uh, uh, doing theory formulation. We all do theory formulations on why did this happen and how do I deal with it and try to build our own sets of theories. Now what, you know, uh, the lecture, traditional lecture method is in, in certain fields is, is that there's a whole bunch of very sophisticated theories in physics and now in computer science and other areas. And so a lot of the undergraduate teaching or, you know, challenge is for them to get up to speed on what the theories are that are well-established theories. And that's hard work, okay? But that isn't really subjective, you know? Don't come up with, uh, you know, Einstein's law in a, in a case discussion. But, but management here and, and the environment of management today is, is your ability to take advantage of the information that's out there. Because we've, we've all said that there's a hell of a lot more information. We've all said that we have access to that information instantaneously. And so the task of the manager living in that environment is more and more trying to be able to put, here's, here's a situation that I have, uh, or a conversation I have about a particular issue, here is some, here's some really important facts, and kind of here's, here's my theory right now, okay, on that. And you're continuously doing that. And what you're also, uh, you know, what we, we do with another classic case is, is we try to communicate to the students is, is that no theory is right. 
by definition, no theory is right. And we've, we see there's two segments here that we really want to try to um, uh, work on. One is, is undergraduate MBAs and, uh, you know, the executive education. The other one is, is general management. There are general managers out there today that literally do not, you know, they're, they're still playing IT as a spectator sport and not a participatory sport. They're still leaving it to their tech guy, okay? Uh, just like they used to leave it to the numbers guys until Enron said, yeah, you didn't understand that, you know, and you're running this company, you go to jail, right? I think that, the, I, that uh, general managers are at the same position. And this is where we, you know, we wrote the book. We took the cases and we wanted to make it a, <coughs> an engaged reading for a trade book, if you will, that managers would read as, you know, a business book and uh, find it engaging enough and learn enough uh, so that they can start getting into the conversations that we think are necessary and playing out their role in, uh, in helping not only identifying IT opportunities but also being responsible in, th in issues like the, uh, you know, the infrastructure, security, and other kinds of issues. Yeah, I, I think you've done just a tremendous job. In fact, I've even named it. It's the interactive visceral knowledge. <laughs> 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 I'm an acronym guy, but I think I think that, that the point here that I is that the, the uh, while this is uh, apparently top targeted towards IT management, the, the other players have to understand what's going on here. The CEO does need this as well. They have to have all the players in the poker game have got to understand the rules and regulations and so on and so forth, or else they're going to be at a loss. And, and so it's not just the IT, the new CEO that's taking this over that's not understanding the interaction and so on and so forth. It's the other side of that equation as well. And I think this is just really good for all aspects of that. The IVK series is available for classroom use. Visit the IVK Initiative website for information about how to download and use the series. To experience approaches to teaching the series, please visit www.uwtv.org to see the companion video, Information Technology Leadership Learning in Action. The IVK series will be published in book form by Harvard Business Press in April 2009 under the title, The Adventures of an IT Leader. Thank you.